Good evening, friends. We will start with today's session. We are discussing regarding the new approach, Hanumanian approach regarding the posology and potency repetition in the sixth edition of organic medicine in the aphorism number 246, 247, and 248. Exactly a controversy between fifth edition and sixth edition, which is there in this in these three aphorisms. In the fifth edition, he, has, he was very firm regarding the giving the single dose to the patient and the thoughts were completely changed after practicing, experimenting with the potencies and he developed a new way of giving the medicine to the patient. And he explained about the plusing technique, how to follow the plusing technique and gradually go on repeating the medicine even in the pathological cases or even in the chronic diseases and how this will not create a severe aggravation and aggravation happens when cure has to happen at the end in case of chronic disease during which few symptoms which again increases during that time and which indicates that the disease is now on the phase of cure and those symptoms are labeled as shin symptoms and that aggravation is called as a homeopathic aggravation. It happens late in the chronic cases. And that's what we have discussed in the last lecture. The practical application of the blessing technique, which is explained in the footnote of that paragraph 248, that also we have discussed. And I have explained my own method comparing the Hanemanian method. The convenience is very important if you want to follow Hanemanian method. The patient refuses to go for it for long term. Yes, if it is for a one or a day or two, it's okay. But if you can, if patient has to continue the same way or same method, it is rather difficult to follow and people refuses using such a method. They are ready to consume the tablets. They are ready <clears throat> to consume the globules, but they are not ready to follow the water potencies with plusing technique. And that's why the solution which I have mentioned, the way I used to practice, that I'm giving 10 succussions every time to the same bottle prepared with the same potency. And every time the 10 succussions and taking one dose is a rather simple method which I used to follow and still produces good results with it. That's what we have discussed. Let us go ahead. What he wants to explain about the <coughs> aggravations. He has explained about the homeopathic aggression in earlier paragraph. Now he is explaining what the I mean by exactly the medicinal aggravation and how it happens. So 249, aphorism number 249. <clears throat> Every medicine prescribed for a case of a disease which in, in the course of its action produces new and troublesome symptoms not pertaining to the disease to be cured is not capable of effecting real improvement and cannot be considered as homeopathically selected. It must, therefore, either, if the aggravation be considerable, be first partially neutralized as soon as possible by an antidote before giving the next remedy chosen more accurately according to the similarity of the action. Or, if the troublesome symptom were, if the troublesome symptoms be not very violent, the next remedy must be given immediately in order to take the place of improperly selected one. <clears throat> See, in earlier aphorism, where he has mentioned that if original symptoms of the disease which gets aggravated, when you go on increasing the potency gradually by plusing technique, and at the end, when cure has to happen, the original symptom again increases in its strength. That aggravation is labeled as a homeopathic aggravation. But if your remedy is partial similimum or if your remedy is wrong and you start giving the, your remedy with this water potency or protein technique in chronic disease and after starting the remedy, the new symptoms started appearing which are not there earlier in the patient. Those symptoms which appears newly indicates that 
remedy is partial similimum or it is not perfectly similimum. It indicates the aggravation which is labeled by Hahnemann by the name of medicinal aggravation. And what he says, if you find it out such type of medicinal aggravation, the need is either if it is of a severe type, you have to antidote it. If it is not of a severe type, you just wait for some time, the symptoms will disappear and you find it out a right remedy and give that remedy to the patient immediately. So there are two methods to if medicinal aggravation happens. First method is to antidote the first medicinal aggravation and then find it out a right similimum for the case again, taking the case in detail and just finding a new remedy, new similimum to the case. And if it is of a very mild character, then there is no need to antidote that. He says that you just take a new totality, find it out a right remedy and give that remedy to the patient. So such type of, whenever the such types of medicinal aggravation happens when dealing with the chronic cases, these are the approaches. And what he says in the footnote, there is one footnote to this paragraph, footnote number 135. So learn that footnote, what exactly he wants to explain. As all experience shows that the dose of the specially suited homeopathic medicine can scarcely be prepared too small to effect perceptible amelioration in the disease for which it is appropriate. Aphorism number 275 to 278. We should act judiciously, injudiciously, and hurtfully, where we when no improvement or some, though it be even slight, aggravation ensue to repeat or even increase the dose of the same medicine, as is done in the old system, under the delusion that it was not efficacious on account of its small quantity, its too small dose. Every aggravation by the production of new symptoms, when nothing untoward has occurred, <clears throat> in the mental or physical regimen, invariably proves unsuitableness on the part of medicine, formerly given in the case of disease before us, but never indicates that those have been too weak. Here he compares the medicinal aggravation from homeopathic point of view and from allopathic point of view. From allopathic point of view or from modern medicine, they used to give the medicines in a strong doses, larger doses. And even after giving large doses, if it is not showing any good change over there, what do they do? They used to increase the doses. And many a times, when they used to increase the doses, it used to produce more and more harm. But when you think or when you go homeopathically, and if you find there are the symptoms which are which are developing, which are not at all there in the case, it indicates the medicinal aggravation. Generally, what happens we when we used to use only centesimal and not the plusing technique, chances of getting the medicinal aggravation are much more because. If we are not able to judge the susceptibility and we have given a medicine in a wrong potency. In such cases, and if it is not perfect similimum, new symptoms started appearing. What anyone says in such types of cases, it is necessary to find it out exactly the medicinal aggravation. And if you are able to judge that, then there is a immediate need to antidote that if it is of a severe character and if it is of a mild character, just wait and find it out new similimum and give that similimum to the patient. But <clears throat> there is rather absolute difference from homeopathic angle and from the allopathic angle regarding the medicinal aggravation. Medicinal aggravation when happens with homeopathy, there is either you can antidote, either you can just go on finding new, new remedy. But such types of medicinal aggression never harms the patient if you are able to judge the patient easily. And that aspect one should develop.
one should be able to find it out very easily. I have explained one case of uh, aggravation, or maybe the medicinal aggravation, in the Pune seminar. I have told that case, which was which was a, that was the only one medicinal aggravation which I have seen in my practice, <clears throat> and that was in 1996 or 97. The patient came to me. There was a huge OPD, and my OPD was very small at that time. So the wetting was full with patients, and one of my close patients, she came and she expected very early medicine from me. <clears throat> so she entered in my cabin from a different door, and she entered and she asked doctor, I'm having severe sore throat, just give me a medicine. I never, I just watched throat and there was a pustule on the tonsil. So I, I never took the modalities. I never asked the exactly sensations or what she is happening. I just concluded immediately and given her heparsal. After giving heparsal, the immediately in the evening she came and she came with that doctor, I am having the pain in joints and of the hand. I just observed that. I said, let, let it be. If it is not so severe, it will disappear. But what has happened? Within whole night, she suffered a lot. And next day morning, she was in an acute traumatic state. It was an acute traumatic arthritis attack. And she was absolutely better than next day. It was very of a severe character. So, such things can happen if you overlook the patient. And that's why it is necessary. That, that was a big lesson uh, which I got at that time. Thereafter, I started thinking a lot when prescribing the remedy. So it, this has happened. So I took the case again and I found the Dalkamara as the remedy for the case. And then I started Dalkamara. And within two days, she was again coming came to the normal. Her, all reports were very bad on day one, which found to be normal later on. But this was this happens many times if you never give attention what the patient explains properly. And that's why medicinal aggravation, we have to be very careful. And we should, when we are dealing with the acute, we must look towards what the patient exactly tells you. So this is what he has explained about the medicinal aggravation in this 214 and aphorism. Uh, we'll read one more aphorism 250 into this session. When to the observant practitioner who accurately investigates the state of disease, it is evident in urgent cases after the lapse of, lapse of only 6, 8 or 12 hours, that he has made a bad selection in the medicine, last given. In the patient state is growing perceptibly, however slightly, worse from hour to hour, by the occurrence of new symptoms and suffering, it is not only allowable for him, but it is his duty to remedy his mistake by selection and administration of homeopathic medicine, not merely tolerably suitable, but the most appropriate possible for the existing state of his disease. So what he explains over there, that here you have to find it out a remedy for the patient if the aggravation is increasing every hour. Here you have to just take that patient again. You have to take into consideration the whole totality and find it out a right remedy. This is too important. So just giving antidote is not the thing. After antidoting, you have to find it out, whole totality of the case, and you have to choose a right remedy for the case. There is one more footnote which was remaining for the earlier paragraph that is the um, related with the improperly selected one, footnote number 136, that will read. The well-informed and conscientiously careful physician will never be in a position to require an antidote in his practice. If he will begin, as he should, to give the selected medicine in smallest possible dose. A like minute dose is of a better chosen remedy will re-establish order through. So what it says, if you are not giving very high dose, 
High dose means your material quantity. Keep it in your mind that material quantity indicates larger doses. If you are giving highly potentized, it is not high dose. It becomes more and more minute, but it carries more energy. Those physicians who knows the depth of action of the remedy. Um, if, you, if one knows that Barata has action for nearly about 30 to 40 days or calcarea or lycopodium or sulfur or magnesium, natrum, sepia, these are very depicting remedies. Here, you should not repeat very fast. Here, you should be careful while prescribing. If you go on repeating such a cases, in such cases, then it creates the problem. Then there, if it is wrongly prescribed and you are repeated it, it will definitely cause a medicinal aggravation. But if you know, even though it is wrong, and if you are not given so much of repetition, then there will be no medicinal aggravation. Or if medicinal aggravation happens, it disappears by its own. There is no need to antidote that specific uh, medicinal aggravation. But if it happens, and if it is increasing every hour, then it is necessary to antidote and find it out or to choose a right remedy depending upon the new symptom. So how to tackle medicinal aggravation? That aspect he has mentioned regarding it. And this, this is very important to understand. So medicinal aggravation and their treatment, homeopathic management, was explained in aphorism number 249 and 250 along with two footnotes to the paragraph 249. For the students who are there, it is a very important short note topic from exam point of view. So they should go with, the, with this aphorism in order to understand exactly what he wants to explain about the medicinal aggravation and prepare their notes. So this is this is where we'll uh, this is the topic of today tomorrow we'll start with the 251 where he mentions about one more thing that we'll discuss in tomorrow's session and tomorrow definitely we'll have uh, one more session at nine o'clock uh Aurum, since last nearly about one month we were postponing the lecture but tomorrow night definitely we'll have a session on in uh, Aurum and its soils. So be there at 9 o'clock and also we'll have a session at 6 o'clock, regular organon session. So thank you being there. If any queries are there, we'll have chat. Otherwise, we'll stop. Hello, sir. Hmm? Uh, hello, sir. Good evening. If uh, uh, anybody want to uh, give the proper similimum, if there is a medicinal aggravation and... Uh, uh, we have given antidote, then how much time period we should wait to give the second similimum? If, if after giving antidote, if, if you observe that patients aggravated uh, medicinal symptoms which appears over there or the symptoms which appears over there, uh, they disappear, then it is a time to find it out a new totality. Another way is that if they are not, not of a severe character, then you take that also in the totality. Because ultimately, it is the reaction of the patient which you have to take into consideration. And that forms your totality because even though it appears after giving the medicine, uh, still it is a reaction of a vital force against the medicine. And you have to take both the symptoms, the newly arrived symptoms as well as original symptoms and you have to form the totality and you can give the medicines without waiting also. Uh, it depends what type of aggravation it is. If, if Whether it is going in very wrong direction called as a killer's aggravation or something like that, then you have to, you must antidote immediately. But if it is not so, just you have to match the totality and find it out a right remedy for the case depending upon that. So if it is not of severe character, just immediately you can start new remedy to the patient. The case with which I have prescribed Dalkamara later on, 
I have started immediately in Dalkamara in very high potency and it works so beautifully that within 48 hours patient is, was all right. But it was a very um, important case which taught me a lot in my life regarding the application of the winds. Any other query? Yes, sir. Thank you. So we'll conclude the session and tomorrow we'll meet at 6 o'clock. Thanks a lot.